Damn, it's like, get your hand up in your hands. Talker with Reverend Zechariah A. Jackson. Reverend Jackson is founding pastor of the Church of What's Happening Now, located in Plainfield, New Jersey. And now, the town talker, Reverend Zechariah Jackson. Always oh, good coming to you. This is the American Reverend Zechariah A. Jackson from the Church of What's Happening Now, Town Talker Talk Show. We got a whole lot to talk about. You know, last night I um, rushed to get home to hear the president's State of the Union address. You know, it was it was um, a good thing to do, and I urge most people on Facebook to uh, listen out for the face of the, uh, the State of the Union address. You know, I mean, it's just uh, it's good every year to uh, take the time to hear the president, uh, no matter <laughs> which party is in office. You know, party things seem to be a, a big thing, but you know what? There's a selfishness that I think that us Democrats are just going to have to realize is just, just that, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, different parties that, you know, we we are definitely want uh, our party to win as I imagine the Republicans want their party to win. And I tell you, it was uh, it was quite quite a remarkable speech. You know, First Lady, of course, uh, looked real nice yesterday. I, I got a glimpse of her and everything and uh, uh, didn't see the kids. I guess they were in bed. <laughs> Come on, 9 o'clock last night, so I guess the kids were asleep or whatever. But it still was good, and, and I just want to go to a, a, a part from YouTube just talking about when the president kind of criticized um, the Supreme Court decision on uh, um, uh, 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 letting investors uh, invest into the... Um, uh, uh, With all due deference to separation of powers, here it is last here. week the Supreme Court reversed a century of law that I believe will open the floodgates for special interests including foreign corporations, to spend without limit in our elections. I don't think American elections should be bankrolled by America's most powerful interests, or worse, by foreign entities. They should be decided by the American people. And I'd urge Democrats and Republicans to pass a bill that helps correct. You know, and that really is so true that, you know, um, with the president, the uh, point that he was trying to make, and uh, so many people, I guess, uh, didn't go along with what he was saying, but it is true that um, this shouldn't be uh, backed by uh, 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 large corporations and things and, and foreign uh, uh, corporations, because then again, you'll never know who actually back in the election, and then you don't want those favors to come out and stuff. And I think that what the, the point that the president was trying to make yesterday, that we all have a part in the development of this nation, which we call America, you know. And, uh, you know, you, you hear so much uh, 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 backbiting today, uh, you know, everything is put on the president. But as the president mentioned earlier, is that, you know, uh, in the speech that, you know, he came into office and we already <laughs> had this problems, you know, and just that so many people get so, uh, I don't know to call it disillusion, or they don't remember, you know, the the um, eight years of George W. Bush, you know, and uh, I wonder myself, I mean, like, you know, where where have you been all this time? Because again, you know, um, uh, we came in, um, when the president came into 
took to the office that there was a whole lot of things going on and we were basically uh, 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 pedaling our way through. Gas was was up, was up high and uh, things of that nature and uh, jobs, we had great job loss and I think the president basically spoke on also that we have to get back in the game of, uh, of, of exporting, not so much importing, you know. We've all got uh, uh, on the bandwagon of actually importing and things, you know. Uh, let me just mention this right here. To the community, to the people out there, you know, um, a lot of things that, that you buy today on the Internet, um, uh, you buy them, but they don't come actually from the United States. I ordered uh, a copy of the old series, The Six Million Dollar Man, if, if some of you old enough to remember that, you know. And uh, they come out of China. The box actually come from China. I ordered the old Batman movie, uh, a TV series, and uh, the, the the videos come from China. <laughs> you understand me? For me and a woman, when I uh, got the uh, Batman uh, 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 DVDs, and, and she said, well, you got a box here from China at the post office. I said, well, maybe maybe some of that stimulus package money in there. No, I didn't know nobody in China that I knew of. You understand me? So we... Uh, me and the lady in the post office opened the box together. I said, well, whatever it is, we'll split it half half and keep it moving. You know what I mean? And I opened it and blessed the God there was a Batman uh, DVD. So I think that there's a lot of accountability that, that has to be uh, recognized. And, and I think that 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 uh, what he was trying to show that doesn't matter what party that you're in, but we have to work together. Don't just drop a bill or, 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 or knock down a bill just because you're from this party, uh, you're from the Republican Party, you're just trying to show because it's not just about you, it's about people that come after you, you know what I mean? So, and so many of us today that we, we really don't, don't, don't seem to get that um, that that although we have uh, two separate parties on things, but the bottom line is that it come down to one thing. It come down to us as a people working together and trying to build a nation that's going to be very 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 productive. And I think that um, uh, where we uh, 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 are losing ground today is that we not recognizing that that right there is the actual job of putting someone in office. It's not you know. Um, I think that. When I look at what happened up in Massachusetts a few week a week a week or two ago, and I mean it was just to me, I think it was just a deadhead slap in the face because um, Senator Edward Kennedy served that that region for many many years. Then after he died, they just put a and he was a Democrat. I mean you know and after he died, they just put a Republican in. You know that was like I, I don't know that. Do they look at this here in America as Obama land or, or Obama thing or, or, you know, what he's trying to say is, listen, you know, let's all work together in this way. Right but then there's truly people that, that's just not even even listening to that at all. They're not paying it no, no attention at all. So, I mean, we have a, a responsibility here to do and let's work together and let's try to build, build this nation up again. Because, again, we cannot be a nation that's truly just going to... Uh, um, um, uh, progress on imports. We have to be a nation that's going to also have exports going out. Our cars need to be sold all over the world. There's so many nations out here that's not retooled that America could could actually serve as a bridge to retool these nations. You know, like, again, um, we look at our back door, our friends and our brothers in many, many walks of life, in many, many ways, our Haitian nation uh, over there, and I call it our Haitian nation because it's right there, not too far from Florida. So why would it be? You understand me? You know, it would be ludicrous to call anybody else, you know. And we have the islands there that, that we could help retool. There's so many things that I think that we could, could do if we get away from bigotry. But I wonder, is your bigotry in America uh, as deep as it was many, many years ago when my great great my great grandfather needed that truck down in Georgia and you just wouldn't sell it to him. <laughs> you understand? You just wouldn't sell it because you're bigger, you just wouldn't sell it to him. You know, have you moved or have we moved from that? And and if we have not, what can I do as a man of God? What can I do not to bring that burden on my back? You, you understand? Because I'm 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 uh, uh, um, I'm bought in or, 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 or I'm reared into some of that bigotry and everything. I just asked the, 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 the uh, clergy out there to pray for the Reverend, the American Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the church of what's happening. Now that I don't get some of that on my back because I don't want you not to have something I have, you know what I'm saying, that I could sell you that can lift you up. And I don't want 
not to give it to you only because I don't like the color of your skin or the context of your character. I want to be a man that's in business. And I think that that's what the president was hitting on yesterday, that America is going to have to be a nation that's going to have to be in business. You have China. They're in business with dealing with many, many worlds. You understand? Because the Chinese land in Haiti. Yeah, they, they, they land. The Chinese was there. They was there the next day, and they had their flags on the runway. The Chinese were standing out there, had their flags, so they were there in Haiti. And China is a long way, Haiti, a long way from China. But they sure found a way to come, and they letting you, you know that we're going to put our print on things also. They let people know that, that we're out here. So how is it, or why is it that we can't re-engineer the consciousness or the mindset of the America and make America more into what is supposed to be a multicultural economic giant. Why is it that we seem to be falling short on things and things uh, in that nature? Why is that right there that we have we have become uh, uh, you know like like, like a bunch of uh, uh, cowards that sit around and just complain? You understand I me? Mean, just complain about things, but what are we doing to really help things? Are we, you know, are we just, uh, uh, you know, all of us becoming a uh, uh, couch? Uh, what do they call that? A um, uh, 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 couch quarterbacks? I'm not a football man. What do they call that right there? The uh, 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 armchair quarterbacks? Or are we going to get out there on the field? I know years ago when I first recognized that one punch could actually. Uh, 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 mature into the next. I went out there into the world of boxing at a young age, and I remember going in different countries and everything, and and taking my fist, actually trajecting my fist across my body, and just seeing how it would hit somebody to make you know before I got a good job and everything, how I could make some kind of funds, and I I put something together. I said you know this fist here I've got can be used to go upside a guy head and knock him down that will give me a few two or three hundred dollars where therefore I would not you understand me be so much wrapped up in poverty as I was reared you understand and I recognized that I could do something with what God had given me you understand me when are we in America going to recognize that we can do something to help other people without sitting down becoming a bunch of armchair quarterbacks and the ugliness uh, that we dispense across the media and everything and the, the mindset that we don't want to work together. When are we going to change the game and become people of help? When are we going to even remember our story that had not our story been Plant the way it would plant, people wouldn't even be able to mature to become American. You see, but my, I, you know, I, I, I have to remind some people because they seem to get amnesia that you know my family was in Georgia before it became the United States of America. You see, they were there. You understand way back there. You understand. Go on down there. You find some of our carbon print somewhere. You know, uh, my mama used to often tell the doctor when they wanted to see us, and she would say, "Nothing wrong with my children." She said, "You look at that mountain over there. You see that train going through their cousins, and one dug that hole." You understand me? You know, she didn't use the terms, of course. You know, as I use today. You know, you understand? She wasn't as educated and fluent as I am today. I'm trying to be, but she used a term to let people know that you know we have been here already, but we still had to mature into an understanding of what America could be. And I look at today, uh, uh, this nation. The nation of Haiti, as we all cried out and everything, of uh, you know, and uh, Barack Obama had something that they put in Newsweek. Uh, it says uh, why Haiti matters about Barack Obama. And I look at the infrastructure of a nation and of good people that could be better. And, 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 and you see, God set up things that you know, America today. We need to. Uh, exercise even as a practice again to get into exporting again and why not we export to nations like Haiti I have two friends of mine uh, here that their mother uh, mothers both of them mothers just barely escaped Haiti after the earthquake I got Francia uh, 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 Francia uh, 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 Desi Desi Francine Francine right Francia Desi and I have also uh, uh, Marie 
Francois. Okay. And uh, Francia come to the United States when she was 12 years old. Is that right? No, your mm -hmm. brother's told me you come when you're 12. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, Marlene come when she was like 19 or 20. Is that right? Yes. Got to talk a little louder for, for the mic there. Is that right? 19 and 20? Yes. So you went, let's just go to Marlene for a minute. You actually went through the school system of Haiti. The whole school system from, I guess, uh, grade uh, zero, what they call it, uh, uh, kindergarten all the way up. Yes. How was it being educated in Haiti uh, uh, and everything? What was the difference of, you know, when you come to the United States? And what was the motivation of you coming to the United States? Um, I will say there's a difference, not a big one, because back home we used you we really use our mind to yes. study. Mm -hmm. But over here it's like um most of the kids or most of the people use like we call technology. Sure. Such as um, com um computer and stuff like that. But back home you have to use your mind. So in other words, you didn't have the calculators and things that we had. Here. We do, we do, but they want the at. I mean, they always make sure you know everything by heart first before sure. you have to use um, the calculators. When you look at what happened over in Haiti, um, uh, and of course I'm with you and everything. We try to get you in Washington to get your uh, 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 passport stamp so you can go, but your mother turn up. And thank God for that right there. What do you think that could be done to Haiti to make Haiti a better place today? To redevelop Haiti? What would what would be the first strategy outside of just giving money? What what could we do different? You have no clue of what we could do different. Not really. Okay, let me okay, let me get a go more in depth. Now, uh, in terms of the, the, the school system over there, what could we do different to bring Haiti more into the twenty first century without slighting Haiti at all? Without calling her a name. Oh okay. What could we do to bring uh, bridge a gap to elevate Haiti into more of a twenty first century nation? Meaning a nation of progress and technology and things of that nature. First of all, the people, my people, yeah, needs God. Yeah. As I always tell people, God is is um our creator. Yes. Once you believe in Him, mm -hmm. everything will be okay. They need God in their lives. Yes. And also, they need to be organized. Yeah. They need to be. Together, sure, sure, do sure. everything together, sure. pray together, mm -hmm. and if I'm starving, you have food in your house. Yeah, you share with me. Yeah, and you see my kids on the street going somewhere, doing something wrong. You have the right to stop them. But if you think you're gonna do everything on your own, or you don't care about your neighbor, you don't care about your sister, we we are not going anywhere like that, cause God wants us to be together. Yes, uh, that, 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 that makes a lot of sense, uh, 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 Marlene, but I want to get more off of, and, and I'm a reverend and I believe in Jesus Christ, but I want to get off of the more of the emotional side because, see, I know the God that I believe in. Mm -hmm. I know the God I believe in. He's great. He's a great God. Mm -hmm. But guess what? When I looked at sin in the other day, and I seen the many planes that was coming to rescue people that was coming into Haiti. That was a blessing. It was a blessing. But you know what I find? Some of those people did not come from the same God that I believe in, but they were there anyway. Yes. The Chinese people was there. And I, and, and I think the bulk of them probably believe in more of the, the Buddhist God. But they were there. You understand? So what I'm... I'm trying to get away from the motion. See, I know my God. Like I know my mama. And nobody made short and short and better than my mama. At least I didn't tell them they did it anyway. Because right? I just my mama. But when you see a world community coming together, right? 
when you see a whole world coming together, then you've got to say that it goes back to the thing that if you're in a hole stuck and someone reached a hand down in the hole, you don't ask them what color, what race, no. what God, or you just say, give me your hand and they pull you up That's and you right. thank your God. Now we think in our God, Right, But there were many gods that motivated many people to come into that part of the yeah. region to help. So what can we do outside of, not say outside, but more from an organizational thing to rebuild and reconstruct Haiti as a world-powered nation without just using just my God, Francia? Well... Talker? Yeah. Oh. I guess the people have to. The, the people, it's like they're not really together together. It's like if they see somebody in trouble, it's like they won't really help them. Well, you. Oh, oh. They, won't, they won't really help because it's like. Everybody have, for themselves. Yes. But, like well, okay, but it would be the same way here in America. And you might can't, you probably couldn't fathom that. You probably couldn't see that. But because it would be the same way in America when people are desperate, everybody for themselves, and you know, they say, God for it all. You understand? I remember when the kid would drop a cookie, you say, God made dirt. You drop a cookie on the ground, he said, God made dirt, dirt don't hurt. Put it in the mouth and let it go to work. You understand me? You know, but we can't have everybody dropping a cookie and eating it like that. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, we got to put, you know, we cushion that right there so the drop, you know, we want everybody dropping cookie. You know, I don't want to eat a drop cookie, you understand me? Because we may, right. may fall in some nuclear dirt next thing you know my head is glowing green. But I'm trying to say this right here is this, Francia. What can we do different to, I'm talking about in terms of a, infrastructure, hotels, trains, and things. I know you left Haiti when you were 12 years old, mm -hmm. and it's quite different for you oh, no, than you, than Marlene, because I noticed that when Marlene took a look at these pictures here that's in this Newsweek magazine and everything, and, and she went right into a motion where I noticed that you looked at them, and you felt it, but you felt it a little bit different. You understand? Because, see, I've been with Marlene many times, and she's a good sister, and I've seen her grieve. And you know, she grieved real deep, because we was in Penn Station, and she was grieving as we were walking through, and people was tipping their hats to her. She didn't see it, because she was in the grief. And they were saluting us, because we were trying to get her down to, to uh, Washington to get her uh, passport stamp to go into Haiti. But they know you understand me? Where you, you understand me, I don't know that people would have done the same thing because your level of grief is more like mine. You understand me? You have evolved into more like American. You see, I've often told you that right there. So now, uh, with your Western school of thought, you coming at 12 years old, mm -hmm. what, what could we actually do to build a strong infrastructure? Uh, uh, in Haiti, what would be the thing that, that that could be actually done to build that infrastructure? Well, I guess they would have to change the government. I mean, that's the number one. The if the government structure. is not is not really serious about Haiti, about helping Haiti, then it's not you know it's not going to change. But do you really think that it's the government, or do you think that they're just working with what they got? It's the government. Because sometimes we blame politicians, and we all do. We blame them, but sometimes it's just what they got. You understand me? If you they do have stuff to work with, but it's like it's like it's for themselves. It's not for the poor people. It's for the rich, it not is, for the poor. Yeah, but that's how most nations would that's be. Most people would be that way, and coming from a real if there wasn't structure. You you understand me? What I'm trying to do? I don't want to play the blame game because I've seen even some of that attitude even here in the United States. You know, if I go back to the 60s and everything, I could remember those that had and those that didn't have. And then some of those that did have, they did pass down and help some of them, but some of them really didn't even care. They just kept on moving on, you know. So what can, what about the school system, uh, 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 Marlene? Let me, let me touch on that because we had two guys here yes, uh, last week. And, and one of the guys talked about, he basically, went, went, went like you did, he went through the school system and back and forth, actually, back in America, back in Haiti. And he uh, actually went through the system 
you know, uh, and he talked about the education of what you guys were taught. What, what were the primary in social studies, which would be history, what were you really taught in Haiti? History. 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 Um. Were you taught, taught about Napoleon and things of that nature? And Were you taught about French, the French history a lot in Haiti? A lot of, but um, we thought about um, our own history. Okay. Your, the Haitian history. Yes. How Haiti get its independence. Okay. All that. We learn a lot, a lot of stuff back there. Because some people think we only learn um, only Haitian history. Sure. It's not sure. We learn a lot. We learn America history. Mm -hmm. We learn um, other, other countries history too. But are your history, in terms of the textbooks, are they more centered around European history, meaning French history, more so than it would be, you know, uh, American history, which mm. America is right next door to you? No, not really. Okay. Not mm. really. Do you remember Francia going to school in, years ago in Haiti? A little bit. Okay. What, did, bit. <laughs> what, what did you remember? Well, because I know my school, the one I went to, it, it wanted us to, you know, speak French. Sure. And, you know, they, they have little books for us to read. And we had a history book. We had um, geographic. And we have a book that, that calls, um, I think it was um, the moral books. Moral books. Mm -hmm. But in French. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was all in French. Okay, now, but you speak French and Creole. Or do you just speak for Creole? Mostly Creole. But you understand French? Some. So, what about you? Uh, I do French and Creole because they teach French back like there, English. They teach a lot of languages that people don't really know. Mm -hmm. We have Creole, our own yes. language. We have French, English, and... Um, some Spanish. Mm -hmm. We do learn Spanish back right there. Sure. That's why sometimes when you're walking on the street here in America, you see Haitian people talking Spanish. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. We learned that back right there too. Do you know Spanish, Francia? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you do? A little. Okay. okay. If I'm in trouble, I could defend myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's always a good thing and everything. Uh, you know, you, you can. Uh, find your way around oh okay but now, that's a good thing sure on uh, one time i was it was like five years ago i was in manhattan with my little brother who was sure. born here but after that um few months after my mother sent him by there he stayed with us for like mm, six months where he learned stuff from us sure. and i was in manhattan with him and little lady was passing by he she asked me for information you know about where she she had to go to get, um, I think, the ticket for, um, for the train, stuff like that. The boy didn't give me the time to answer that lady, and I was so proud. And I told him, look, I'm going to pay you because you make me so proud of you. So he answered in, in, in Spanish? In French. Oh, in French. Oh, and okay. And he was born here. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 I was so proud of it. I'm like, oh, my God, you making my day. Well, let me ask you, how close is... Creole in French. Is it real close mm. in language? Or? Yes, because it's just like Spanish. For example, in Spanish, you said it's, um, when you say, um, when you're talking about color, let's say red is like rojo. Okay. In our language, it's like, you say rouge. Mm -hmm. It's just a simple difference, but it's not a big one. And what about in French, what would you say? French, this is not a big difference. There's no big difference between French and um, Creole. So let me ask you this, right? If you would have went, instead of coming to America, we had a guy here last week that went to France. You would fit, probably fit right in in France. Yes, why not? Without any... Yes, yeah, because I already learned French from sure. my home. Okay. And you got like a, 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 a sub-French culture. Yes. Okay. All right. And then when I came here, I went to college. I studied French too. It was French. I took um, many semesters of um, 
French and Spanish. That's why I, I just say that I could defend myself. Okay, okay. Well, uh, uh, Francie, you want to say one word real fast? Well, if the people here want to help Haiti, you know, they can send their donation in.